Chapter 16, Mishnah 7. We have learned that a single witness, even someone who is usually not accepted as a witness, such as a woman, is believed to say that a man is dead in order to allow his wife to remarry. The Mishnah explains how this law became the accepted practice. Rabbi Akiva said, When I went down from Eretz Yisrael to Nahardia, a city in Babylon, to establish the leap year, I met Nehemiah of Beis Deli. He said to me, I have heard that none of the rabbis in Eretz Yisrael allow a woman to remarry on the testimony of a single witness that her husband died, except for Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba, who is the only one who relies on such testimony. I said to Nehemiah, that statement is correct. And he said to me, tell the rabbis in Eretz Yisrael in my name. You know that the roads in this country are in turmoil because of threatening troops, and therefore I cannot go to Eretz Yisrael myself. However, I wish to pass on the tradition I received from Rabban Gamliel the Elder, that we permit a woman to remarry based on the testimony of a single witness. Rabbi Akiva continued, And when I came back to Eretz Yisrael and presented Nehemiah's words before Rabban Gamliel, who was Rabban Gamliel the Elder's grandson, he rejoiced at my words and said, We have now found a companion who agrees with Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava, namely Rabban Gamliel the Elder, and we can now allow women to remarry more easily. While discussing this matter, Rabban Gamliel remembered an incident that once men had been killed in Tel Arza, and Rabban Gamliel the Elder had allowed their wives to remarry based on the word of a single witness, just as Nehemiah had related. As a result of receiving this tradition, it became established for all the rabbis to allow women to remarry based on a single witness. In addition, it later became established to allow women to remarry based on witnesses relating testimony that he had heard from another witness, and based on testimony given by a Canaanite slave, a woman, or a Canaanite maidservant. The Mishnah cites other opinions. Rabbi Elias and Rabbi Yeshua say, we do not allow a woman to remarry based on a single witness. Rabbi Akiva says, a wife may not remarry based on the testimony of a woman nor based on a Canaanite slave, nor based on a Canaanite maidservant, nor based on the wife's relatives. The sages who held that any woman may, the sages who held that a woman may remarry based on such testimony, challenged Rabbi Akiva's rulings, ruling based on an incident. The sages told Rabbi Akiva, how can you say that a wife may not remarry based on a woman's testimony? There was an incident with Levim who traveled to Tsoar, the city of date palms, and one of them became sick along the way, and they brought him to an inn. They continued to Zohar without him, and on their return they said to the woman innkeeper, where is our friend? She told them, he died and I buried him. Based on her words, the rabbis allowed that, allowed that man's wife to remarry. The sages said to Rabbi Akiva, should a Kohanis or other Jewish woman of distinguished lineage not be considered as reliable as this idolatrous female innkeeper? If this innkeeper was believed to allow a man's wife to remarry, should we not certainly accept the testimony of a Jewish woman in order to allow a woman to remarry? Rabbi Akiva responds, Rabbi Akiva told them, when the innkeeper will be believed, Jewish women will also be believed. In other words, had the innkeeper been believed, you would have, ha you would have a valid argument. However, the innkeeper was in fact not believed on her word alone. Rather, the innkeeper brought out to them the dead man's staff and pouch and the Torah scroll that had been in his possession. These items served as proof that their friend had truly died and confirmed her words. However, her word, or that of any woman, cannot be believed on its own.